It was just the most massive thing I've ever seen. I, to tell you the honest truth, I thought, well, we're the only ones left on this planet. Something's happened. We've missed something here. The fear that went in me when I seen it was just, um, like the feeling, I'd say it was fear, but I've never felt that feeling before in my entire life. It's a weird feeling, like you can't explain it when you don't know. You feel like you're being followed, but you don't know what it is. We had two to our right, another one in front of us, another one to the left, and another one just across the road, shaking the daylight out of the tree. All we get was a big red eye. I remember waking up and looking at the end of the bed and there was a figure there, almost insect-like, and then I blacked out. Welcome to the show, everyone. My name is Cade Moyer, and you are listening to the Believe Paranormal and UFO podcast. If you have had an encounter and would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. If you enjoy the podcast, be sure to leave us a rating or review wherever you listen and head on over to our website, believepod.com, and consider becoming a member to get bonus episodes and video content. So these encounters, they started to happen to you when you're about 21 years old. Do you want to go back to that period of your life and explain where it all started for you? Yeah, well, it's a long time ago now for me. I think probably going back to the mid to late eighties. I was living with my partner. She, she was about the same age, maybe a little bit, little bit younger. We lived down in uh, country Victoria. My partner, she is now my wife. She struck a, a friendship with a woman who was a little bit older than her. Now I, I haven't spoken to this lady for a long, long time, many years. So I don't. Don't know if I have her to, to, to discuss it, but we'll just call her Chrissy first to so give the interview. So, to my wife Tanya, she struck up this friendship. I'd, I'd take her in every every afternoon. She lived in a, a neighbouring town. Uh, neighbouring town. I'd take her in. She'd you know have an afternoon with Chrissy. I'd go off and do what what twenty one year old blokes do. Sort of had a bit of bit of bloke time, I suppose, and that, that was all good. Remember, there was one period there where we were discussing Chrissy. I, I really didn't get to know at all, but we were discussing her. And can you turn to me? She said, "You know, somebody told me that she's a, a white witch." So, what, what's I'm a white witch? Twenty-one year old. Well, oh, exactly. Uh, I, I'm a twenty-one year old, and you know, back in those days, most twenty-one year old, uh, you're full of beans. And you, um, I wouldn't call it arrogance, but you're, you're certainly very, very confident of yourself. Uh, so I turned to tenure of it was something along the lines of what a load of bollocks. Anyway, he said, he said, No, look, it's true. So and so told me she's a white witch and she can talk to the dead and she can do this, she can do that, she can think of the future. I'm thinking, Oh, that's a load of nonsense, you know. Anyway, being a, an overconfident, or well, maybe not overconfident, but very confident young young person, I said to her, look, when you go to see her next weekend, <laughs> talk to her. I want to know about this white, white witch. But yeah, right, no worries. So we, I take her over the following weekend. She has a day, she comes back. Why don't tell me about this white, white witch stuff? And I look, she didn't really want to talk about it. She, she told me little snippets. She admitted she is, but she, she, you know, really didn't didn't want to go any further. And right, I no, I, anyway, as the, the week went on, I thought, well, no, <laughs> I'm going to get to know this lady, and I'm going to spot out about this. Woman. So on the next next bit of the tenure had, on, I came in with her, and you know, the introductions here, new stage, the one you heard about, so on and so forth. So. Sort of got to know her a little bit, got a bit of a little bit of chat going, and then I started to question her. And again, she, she just kind of said, tried to shove me off, but you know, she, she didn't really want to engage in it. But I wasn't having any, any of that. I, I just throwing you know, up. Anyway, this went on for you know several weeks. You know, I got out of her, little bits of her around. Yes, she can talk to good people. She knows when the spirits are around. 
she knows when there's a, there are black witches around, she, she has mind battles with more leaders and things in her. What a load of nonsense, you know. Anyway, but I was amused by it and, and just sort of played the game and, 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 and that was all good. Anyway, it was around this time that my, my father became quite thick and, and, and ended up passing away. So, really importantly for the story, my parents split when I was about five, five or six. I don't remember one, he would remember little sort of bits and pieces about, about that life with dad. Never really got to know him until I'd sort of got my license and, and you know, I'd sort of spent a, a little bit of time in sort of driving into Melbourne to, to meet up with him and, and sort of get to know him again. And, and we, we were just sort of starting to develop that, that father and relationship when he passed away. So, you know, I was obviously a, a bit emotional about that. And, and of course, this is the time that I'm, I'm talking with, you, with, with Chrissy. And, you know, having passed away, I, I, I found myself talking to Chrissy about it. Anyway, she started telling me sort of snippets, you know, where he was and how he was, <laughs> those sorts of things. And it's the best mother to his father. Anyway, one thing led to another. And she said, look, well, I can't remember who organised it, but we organised a seance. So, yeah, yeah, there's me setting up a seance with this white witch. So, part of me, part of me, wanted to catch her out. And that was the, it was the, the, uh, the overconfident 21 year old in me wanted to catch her out and, and just prove it to be a load of nonsense. But the other half of me, which was you know, still emotional about the death of my father, sort of wanted to, to wanted it to be real, if you like. Anyway, we, we set it up. Now, it had to be done close to midnight, apparently, which it was. You know, we arrived because she had the, the spirit board set up. It was one of the first ones with it, and I can't for the life of me remember who it was. So it was Chrissy, it was this other person. I don't think I, I knew them, or if I did know them, I didn't know them very well. And so from Tanya, so the four of us seated ourselves around this, this spirit board. So the, the letters spelled out around the, the peripheral of the board. You've got a glass sitting upside down. I'm feeling around under the table, that I'm trying to magnets, all those sorts of things. Anyway. We, we kicked it off. We had to hold hands. Chrissy said um, whatever it was that she said, I, I can't remember exactly, but it was almost, almost like, a, like a B-grade horror movie sort of thing. And I was <laughs> <yeah>, thinking, what on <laughs> earth? Then hear this ungodly noise from, from the back of the room. Now she had this budgie in the cage, in the corner. You didn't even know she had it. It, it just out there and did absolutely nothing. But on this occasion, she said certain words. She'd sort of come to the crescendo that you know, she built up to saying whatever it was she had to, that she had to say to get the spirits. And it just went crazy. And finally, we died me. But then when, when it settled down, it only went crazy for you know, a few seconds. All Christine said, we, they're here. Or something that, that effect. It, it, or we crossed over or something like that. Uh, yeah, okay. Right, what's next sort of thing. Anyway, she she had to put out her fingers on the glass. A heavy duty glass, you know, not something you can sort of push around that easily. And it started to move. So there's me thinking right, who's pushing it? So I've taken my I've, I've almost taken my finger off it. I, I had absolutely no weight on this thing at all. It started Spelling out words, like protesting a word which was aimed at me, apparently, and it was relevant to something that had occurred between myself and, and my partner, which I didn't think anyone knew about. Anyway, my partner Tanya got a little bit spooked and took the finger off the glass. So we were left with three fingers on the glass. Mine was barely touching it, let alone influencing it. I had somebody, Chrissy, directly in front of me and this person on the left. And this glass was doing things, and I'm watching their fingers really closely. And this glass is at speed, I want to say at speed, it was certainly moving under power, and it was 
spelling out words and phrases which meant things. Oh, really? And I, you know, you, you could see the two people that could have had an influence on it. You could see their fingers. If they were going, going to have an influence, they would be pushing it one way. No, this thing was going the other way. There's no way in the world these people were influencing the movement of this glass and it's spelling out the, the, these bits and pieces of some of them which were totally complimentary. And apparently this was somebody that's on my, my partner's side, someone I didn't know of and I don't think she really knew much better either. But, you know, Tendra did sort of jump a bit spooked and, and obviously she'd, she'd take no sneakers off it. Anyway, I, I'm... I was a little bit stumped, a little bit spellbound. I could not account for one, this thing moving, not the way it was, and two, things that it was spelling out. But anyway, we we got through that, and then Chrissy said, Your father is here. So I got that little bit of a feeling in the belly. It moves, we take water, and it started to move again. But this is my, my son I was speaking to can So it started to rally up what looked like I love you, which that's that's what it spelled out. And I'm thinking, well, you know, that's nice, that's lovely. But then it followed up with the words, little sport. That was what floored me. Absolutely floored me. There were three people in the world, no two of them left, knew about little sport. That was dead at name for me when I was a toddler. Two, three, four. I barely remember it, but I do remember it. Wow. It, however, was buried that far in my memory, even if Christine Chrissy was a mind reader, she still wouldn't have found it. It was buried that deeply. The only other person on the living earth who knew about it was my mother. Who didn't know Chris and she was there. The only other person that knew about it was Dad. He's dead. Did so, that just break the that whole paradigm for you then? Because going into this, you were quite sceptical. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've gone into this day on thinking, oh, what a load of nonsense. This thing is just spelled out, I love you, little sport. Wow. That was, that was my father speaking to me. Now, I'm sure you've got listeners out there that I, I like trying to explain how I felt at that point. You know, as human beings, we have to make sense of things. That, that's the way we're wired, and we have choices. We can talk our way through things. We, we have the slight or slight ability amongst a number of other things. We, we have some element of control over every situation that we can find ourselves in. In this situation, that was gone. I had no control whatsoever. My father is spelled out, I love your little sport. My wife is sitting on the right-hand side, spooked. There's a plastic budgie behind me that just went nuts. It had all kicked in. And I, I remember looking up at this woman in front of me who was close enough to touch looking into your eyes thinking this is not a normal human wow wow that that would have really just tipped everything upside down for you oh yeah I, I, I just can't explain how I felt you know and, you know the thing about it all I can remember that night that's it that's everything Every other detail, I, I remember thinking about it a couple of days later. It, it's like that, what happened after that, it's like that's been erased from my memory. It's, it's really peculiar, you know, and I do remember days after it just torturing myself, thinking, how, how, how has this happened? It took me days, it probably took me a week to really justify, hang on, it, it's real, there is just no other way around it. This has happened. This is real. So, sort of once I'd come to terms with it, I had to get back and see Chrissy 
you know, no, I just needed to talk about it. I, I just needed, I had answers, but I just felt that I, I needed to talk about it to, to justify what had happened. So uh, we went back to see Chrissy. I can't remember, it might have been days, might have been weeks after, a little bit hazy on that. But uh, when I, I walked it was with a completely different attitude. Let okay, me tell you that. I'm not quite in awe of her, but, you know, again, that feeling of this, this is not a normal human being that I'm, I'm about to talk to, you know? Yeah. I'm in her house, and, and she has abilities that are way beyond missing eye of the dream dogs, you know? So we, you know, we sat down, and I mean, she could obviously sense sort of how I was feeling. And I, I was quite emotional about it as well, you know? It, this was my father's sort of thing. Anyway, we... Well, after a couple of hours, sort of, we skirted around it. Then we discussed the insure and a few other bits and pieces. And within a couple of hours, sort of into it, I'm sitting on the couch. I'm sitting on a two-seater. Chrissy was in front of me, and there was no one next to me. Tanya was on a, a two-seater, sort of on the side. Anyway, we chatting away, and talking about Dad. And he said, "That had occurred, more occurring." And then it happened. And I, I don't know how it should have lost me how to explain it. Something arrived next to me. There's nothing that, <laughs> nothing that the human senses could pick up and couldn't see anything, couldn't hear it, certainly couldn't touch it, or not that I tried to. Couldn't smell anything, couldn't taste anything. It, this entity, this, it, it just arrived on the seat next to me. And with enough of the, I say enough of the bang, but it arrived and I launched off the couch. That thing, it seems like your energy. Just one minute I'm talking, next minute, what the hell is that? And I, I launched off the couch. <laughs> and I looked into, into Chrissy's eyes. What the hell that? She, she said, smiled at me. She said, your father was sitting next to you. Oh, wow. Oh, um, God, I'm hiding. You, I would have been a mess. <laughs> I just... I, I do not know how to explain how I felt. But what I will say, I didn't feel in fear of anything while I had Chrissy there, you know? I looked back at the couch and I would sit there. I went back there and I could feel it sitting there, you know. And after that, it's all blank again. Just like after the, the sale, I cannot remember the remainder of that afternoon she got to me. Really? Your, your mind just kind of blanks out on everything else because you, you've just had this highly highly prolific moment in your life happen again um yeah that, that's that's one possibility whether it went beyond that and purposely being blank I don't know I'll, ne- I'll never know the answer to that but I, I find it peculiar that you know after the those two events had no recollection of what followed after after yes, you've so. had these encounters with this white witch, did that change your perspective of the paranormal? Like, did your complete attitude change from that? Because, you know, these are fairly world-shattering kind of encounters that you're having. Did that make you want to go down the rabbit hole of finding out more about that? And now a quick word from our sponsor. Also, are you wanting more content? Why not become a Believe Plus member? You'll get access to exclusive podcasts and episodes that aren't available to the public. Not only that, you'll also get our regular feed without any ads. Head to believepod.com forward slash plus to sign up today for just $5 a month. Yes, it did. Took me in some pretty interesting directions. Whitened me about this initially. And and after the science, I, I do remember thinking, going through it over and over in my mind thinking, no, this is real, it's real, I just can't this is real it then cast my mind back to some of the conversations I'd had with Chrissy 
albeit conversations I had with a different attitude, highly amused, conversations we'd had about good, about evil, about confession, amongst other things. You know, I remember thinking, I was talking to my dad, I was talking to my dad, it's real, it's real, it's real, Chris, he's real. Oh no, this is a double-edged sword. He's told me some things that I, oh, God, I hope are not real, you know. But I've sort of, going short, I've probably found out a little bit, bit more about that. One of the things that, because I'd opened up my mind to all of this, but, like funny, I, I bought a book called The Telephone Prophecy. It's written by James Redshield, I think, back at the time. It, it talked about similar sort of things. It talked about coincidences, coincidences in the marsh, pathways that open up and trying to do all those sorts of things. And, I had my walks around the same time that all this was happening and, and I used to do remember I discussed a lot of that with with, with Chrissy and she she more or less validated you know, the number of things that were in that book. So I was going down that path and what, what I found, Kate, was not to, to develop important abilities, but things. I started dreaming. I started dreaming consistently almost every night. And I, and I wasn't a dreamer, if you like. But I found the dreams were coinciding with certain events that were occurring in my life or around my life. And what I realised, it wasn't what I was dreaming. It was the outcomes of the dreams were basically telling me what was about to occur in your life. Now, that sounds peculiar. But, so you know, so kind of like premonitions. Well, almost. If we had a big event coming up that we knew about, it might be a work event. It, when I say event, it might have been we're going to pull these turbines apart. We're going to do this, this, and this, and highly hard work. We're going to be up to this, that, and the other. I would have dreams before we go and do it. And it, the dreams may not have, well, they weren't necessarily about what was about to happen. What I learned to do was read the outcomes of the dreams. The tone were negative. I knew something negative was going to happen, and it was going to happen soon. And lo and behold, somebody would fall off a scaffold and break their leg, or, or somebody would have a car, or you know, it could be that thing. I probably went for 12 months where I was able to read my dreams and read the outcomes of those dreams, whereby I could accurately predict, knowing what events we had coming up, I could almost predict those outcomes completely. Wow, really? So, yeah. No doubt that I developed some sort of sense that allowed me to do that. And if there were events coming up and I had a uh, a dream with a negative outcome, I knew something was going to, whether it's if, if not to me, to somebody close to me. And it was, it was scary, to be honest with you. I was going to um, say, that would give a lot of people a lot of anxiety about the future. Well, it did, and I looked up. There were days where I'd, I'd have a, a negative dream, and I'd, I'd try to associate it with something that's cropping, about to crop up, or coming up, or whatever. And there was nothing coming up. Life was just sort of plain normal, and it, it, it had me thinking, "Shit, something's going to happen here." And it did have me walking on eggshells. You know, and you don't walk there. Let's not do that. <laughs> you know, just knowing that something's not right, and something's going to come out of the blue, and. Let's say you know, in it would. You know, these are things that I'd, I'd sort of sort of developed. You know, sort of amongst other other crazy dreams and things that maybe didn't make a lot of sense. But you know, this is real. This this was something that I developed. And the more that the, that I was able to harness that, the more I, you know, the more I wanted to delve further. And you know, I talked to Christine about these things, and I, she, you know, she, Christine was the type. She she wouldn't want to push any of this on you. She didn't. I had to, to probe her, and there were times when I knew she knew things, but didn't want to tell me. But what I would get from her is a nod, or she'd give me a positive response some other way. It, it was as if she's got some sort of code that says I'm, I'm not allowed to go and tell people what's about to happen. You know, we we just sort of developed that. I, I could sort of understand her. She was telling me things without telling me things that you like. 
in, in a lot of respects. But they weren't all good. And sort of all came to a bit of a grinding halt there one night. How do you think you got these abilities? Do you think it was maybe something you had all along, but you just weren't open to to the world of the paranormal because, and I, I kind of hate to interject on stories like this, but, and, and kind of, I don't, I don't want to swing the narrative or anything, but I always, I hear quite frequently that people who have an encounter with the paranormal, it kind of opens up that gateway and things are never the same after that again. Do you think this was potentially what happened here with you? I think you put it vertically, to be honest with you. Well, I, 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 I think we all have these abilities. I, I, I think our conscious minds won't let us delve into a lot of this stuff. Uh, and I did have some situations sort of further down the track that, that probably validate that a little bit. But I, I sort of hit a, a roadblock one night. And so I, I was in bed, you know, with my partner. This, this is probably 12 months after, you know, all, all of the, the other stuff that happened. Uh, and I was having my dreams and I was still opening my mind up more and more. And, and, and the more that happened, the more interested I was. I was always mindful of some of the things that we had talked about, but pretty bit like, a lot of those negatives you know, talk about you know, evil entities and all those sorts of things. Anyway, one night we'd gone to bed and all was normal and then I remember floating above my body. So I'm in the back facing the, the roof, the stomach's facing the dead. I'm looking down, I'm floating up towards the ceiling, looking <laughs> me asleep and it's done looking at my partner now, I can only ever remember one instance of actually doing this and I started floating along the window side and then another left turn along the main wall towards the door I don't know where I was going I, I was doing a lap of the road the roof high the ceiling high looking down you know remember moving towards the door and if something stopped me abruptly before I went through and I could feel another entity at the same height that I was it was out outside the kitchen window under the carport and it was looking for a way in oh really how the hell I knew that I don't know but I'm at the door of the bedroom, above the door to the bedroom, looking down on my body and my partner. And somehow I can feel this entity outside the kitchen, which was the other side of the house, looking for a way in. Now, I remember the <laughs> people. Some of the conversations that I've had with Chrissy about possession, about spirits, about those that are lost in between, and on and so forth. And that frightened the hell out of me. <laughs> um, I remember shooting straight back into my body. I remember on my back, my eyes just going from dead shut to open. And I remember saying to myself, I've got to stop doing this. I can't remember ever having an out-of-body experience before and I remember distinctly telling myself stop doing it stop leaving your body and again I was in that I remember I was in that that stage between sleep you know you one minute you're asleep you don't just wake up you're not fully conscious you, you go through a oh you know a bit of a groan and this and that and the other and then bang your, your consciousness steps in I remember I was somewhere in that zone and and when I actually woke up, thinking to myself, what did I just say to myself? I, I remembered, remembered what I said, said to myself when I was in that zone. I lay there the entire night thinking, what the hell's going on? You know, what, what, what has just happened? Now, I don't know if that whatever was floating around outside was evil. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't, 
and again, I don't know why it was there. And I know that I'd left my body, and that was it. I, I went back to Christine several days after that. I said, look, this has occurred, and I said, this is what I feared. I shut the door on this. I said, this is getting out of control. It's, I, I just feel that I'm, I've got that knowing look from Chrissy, and, and almost like a, a look at the book. So, sort of tried to shut the door on it there and then. I, and look, I, I, I pretty much did dreams. Well, it's happened occasionally, but, but the frequency of the dream stopped and sort of life sort of returned a, a little bit to normal, I guess. I still went and saw Chrissy from time to time, but, but I really stopped delving at, at that point. You know, I, I was just too shy of where it was going to take me. Where does that leave you now? Because it's... It's hard to shut a door once it's been opened. And, you know, there's there's always going to be gaps in the frame, so to say. Do you find that even though you've, you know, essentially kind of drawn a, a line in the sand of, of the paranormal and, you know, have said no more, do you find that that world still leaks in every now and then? Yeah, it does. You're absolutely spot on. It, it doesn't leave you, and I'm mindful of that. You know, I've, I've still had you know, a handful of experiences. I, I remember waking up on the couch when my grandmother had died, when my parents we went and lived with their grandparents. I was very, very close with, with my grandmother. I went from sleep into that half sleep, straight into, into consciousness, like consciousness, like you do, like every human does. I remember hoping my eyes and bang, there she was. She died several weeks earlier, but she was standing in front of me, looking down on me. And, I mean, this is, this is going, you know, 10, 15 years after I'd, I'd sort of tried to slam the door shut. Uh, but, you know, she died. She, she, since my father had died, she was the, the, the next cab off the rank as far as, you know, people that were close to me. You know, one thing that, that Chrissy said was, you know, they hang around for a little while. You know, we talked about heaven. We talked about places that are not heaven. We talked about the in-between, but, you know, she said that they hang around and watch over you for a while. And, you know, I'd, I woke up, I, I was briefly in that that realm between, you know, asleep, fully conscious, and it was within that realm, I could see her standing there looking down at me. And as soon as I snapped into full consciousness, she was gone. Really? There was one other, I would say, like, changing event, which chills me that chills me not, not in a bad way but a sort of a, a bit of a wow sort of a way you know, just let me grab a drink of water I ended up joining the Navy as a, an older recruit and this is well and truly after me we were on Sydney Harbour there one day I was going to do a ship's guidance course so they'd taken us out on a, a small boat into the middle of the harbour and we had to don all the gear, we had to dive under the boat. We then had to purge the mother. And, and what that requires is you basically put them up and you have to blow hard to get them out of it and then get the mask back on. I hopped dived in under the boat and tried to pull the mask off, tried to put it and made an absolute mess of it. And get it. But I'm under the boat, couldn't get the water out, couldn't get the air in. And, you know, you know, when you have those, those experiences and you think, oh, God, I'm going to die or <laughs> whatever, you know, they talk about people's lives flashing the toilet. Yeah. That happened to me, except the line that flashed before my eyes was not my own. Really? Yeah, really. So, and what? Well, what I remember having visions. They were navy visions. So I had a, a vision of being in a compartment that was full of water, feeling that we were on a lean. There were explosions, and I was drowning along with the compartment with me. Oh, what? So. I got myself out of the water, threw the mark down and said a few choice words along the lines of, I'll think I'll put this. 
I want to be shit. Anyway, I went home. The ship was long for the main superior. Went back home to Tanya, told Tanya about it. She almost went white. Said, you know, what do you think of that? What's wrong? What, what's the matter? She said, you remember Chrissy talked about past lives? Do you remember she said you and I were together in a past life? I said, yes, I do. She said, remember why we're meant to be together? No, remind me. She said, in our past life, I lost you at war. Wow, that is, that's a mind-bending experience. How do you, how do you process that? Well, look, I, I, having spoken with Christine at sort of at length regarding a lot of this stuff, and with a lot of, I mean, there are other things that have occurred that, you know, I, I haven't spoken about tonight. But, you know, I, I believe in time. I, I, I believe we live more than once. In fact, I believe we live a number of times. I personally believe I was having vision of me in a past life. That was, well, what if that wasn't my life, not my current one. Was that me dying in a war? As what Chrissy described back when Tina and I were together in a past life, if you like. It really. So, it really makes you wonder that that traumatic experience just opened up, you know, a gateway to what that past life was. You know, like there had to be some type of connection from that exact experience that you were having to to that previous life. Yeah, well, you know, I, I probably didn't mention deja vu, but, you know, that's been a big part of my life. You know, I think I, I opened up my mind to a lot of this stuff, but, you know, I, I'd look back at it and I think... It, it, it's quite odd. I didn't want to join the Navy as a kid. As I got older, I developed this desire to do it. All I wanted to do was go and, and serve, you know, go active, all those sorts of things. When I say active, active service. And, and once I did that, I couldn't get out of the Navy quick enough. I mean, I, I look back at that and say to myself, was I just trying to achieve something that I started in a previous life and obviously didn't get to finish, you know? Yeah, wow. That is. Does that make you yeah, feel yeah. like you? This this might sound like a silly question, but does that make you feel like your past life was trying to rob your quality of life that you're having now? I don't know. Um, you know, I, look, I, I do believe we. As I said, I, I believe we live more than once. I, I believe that we we're given every opportunity opportunity to evolve as people and as humans as entities, whatever we are, pathways are, are put in front of you. I, you know, I just, just look back and map out my life and think, well, how on earth did I achieve these things? How could this have opened up in front of me? Who would have thought? And I'm no different to, to a lot of people, you know. I, I believe you do get set. You have those pathways put in front of you and you, you have choices. And, and I think you live more than once to, and you're given that opportunity to evolve and you, and you either evolve or you don't. You, know, you go from there. I don't know, but look, you know, certainly when I, I look back over my life and, and a lot of the things that have occurred and a lot of the conversations with, with, with Chrissy, a lot of it makes sense, to be honest. Yeah. Well, Dave, you've been an absolute incredible guest. I, <laughs> The experiences that you've had have been incredible and the, the way that they've altered your life has really kind of it sounds like it's set you on a on a whole new path of enlightenment of understanding and i guess of of future growth that you're not scared to look into it and i think your the outcome from everything is that it's you know majority has been positive and even though you've kind of closed the the door to that world it's it's not fully shut itself off to you but it sounds like you know how to to approach the the rest of your life going forward because of that. Well, I certainly look at events, look at pathways differently, and and you know, I still have the odd dream here or there, and I, I still take certainly take notice of that. But you know, I I, I haven't had a, a lot of experiences in recent years, although 
I still have a habit of being up the phone to answer it before it rings. Apart from that, it's been been pretty quiet in recent years. I certainly certainly take notice of, of a lot more things nowadays than maybe I would have been when I was younger. And had a lot of more credence to a lot of the power plays that I see out here. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Believe Paranormal and UFO podcast. If you have had an encounter and you would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. Finally, don't forget to follow us on all our social media outlets and be sure to join our Discord server to talk to other listeners of the show. You'll find all these links in our show notes. Thank you.